Welcome back to Bricks and Toys. My name is Brandon, and today I have a special episode that is very close to my heart. We are going to be talking about a line of Hot Wheels cars called the Mechanics line. These were very popular in the late 90s to very early 2000s. I do not believe that the line went on really beyond 2002. <clears throat> These are cars that I played with the most when I was around 10 years old. Now, not all of these are from when I was 10 years old. Only a couple are. And I will point those out to you. But first, let me give you a tour of the ones that I have hung up. And then we'll come back to my table here and we'll talk about what exactly are these cars and how do they work and which ones here on this table are from my youthful days before I had a beard and responsibilities and obligations. Starting off my tour is what my brother and I considered to be the unicorn of when we were young. We grew up building 57 Chevys with our dad, and when it came to our collection of mechanics, this was the one that we wanted the most, but it was always sold out of stores and always expensive on eBay. And every single Christmas, it just, Santa never put it under the tree because Santa could not get his hands on it for us. But as an adult, I was able to track one down, and I'm glad to have it. Continuing on is the Dodge Viper. This is another really cool one. I don't believe I personally had this one in red when I was a kid. I do believe that these are also sort of rare and sought after. Coming on up next is the Boss 302 Mustang. This one I did have when I was a kid. Mine was destroyed, but it is back. Brand new in box on my collection wall. Moving on to John Andretti's Petty Motorsports 43 car. Hot Wheels agreed to work with Petty Motorsports because at that time, Kyle Petty was running the 44 Hot Wheels car. And even so, I never had this one as a kid. I am glad to have it as part of my collection. Continuing on, is another one that I did find quite rare. Again, I did not have this one when I was a kid, but I do now. And I'm happy that I have it. It is the Pontiac Firebird, about the 1995 model. Moving on to another one that I did have as a child. We're looking at another Boss 302 Mustang. This one in the more rare orange variety of color. And again, like with the yellow one, parts got mixed matched and broken. And now down to the final three on my wall. This is another one that I did have when I was a kid. And again, smashed and broken. But here, it's brand new, in box, part of the collection. Here we have a hot rod. My brother and I both had this particular car. And of course, mine was destroyed. His, he still has his from all those years ago, but I have repurchased it, brand new in box, for my collection. And the final one is about the 96 Monte Carlo. Kind of like the Firebird, not a lot of these were put out there, and thus I never had it when I was a kid. Things like the Mustang was more popular, and thus I had more varieties of those. Now let's get back to the table and talk about these. So, the ones that I do not currently have hung up are going to be this Jeep. This is your traditional Wrangler Jeep. 
I do not believe I had this particular one as a kid, but like with the ones that I never had, I do now. I have another variety of the hot rod. This one is black. Just thought this one would be cool to have with the other one. I never had this color when I was a kid. And this one I did have as a kid and I did destroy it. This is the mid 90s Dodge pickup truck. 4x4. Pretty sick. Now I'm going to put these off to the side and we're going to get to the table here. Now, a little bit of a fun backstory about myself. My brother and I, even though we are pretty much the same set of core traditions and values, we are completely yin and yang opposite people. He usually believed in protecting and the, keeping his toys clean and near perfect, where me, I was pretty much like kill every toy that I get. I was... Sid and he was Andy, if you ever watched Toy Story. So, the survivors that I'm going to point out on this table are only because of him. And they are going to be this helicopter slash dune buggy race truck. This one was one of my favorites. It could convert into this helicopter. Due to spare parts, I was able to build a, a rough mock-up of each part of it. So, on this particular mechanics, you can have the car with the, with the suspension. And you can have the helicopter. I remember being 11 years old and putting this guy into the dirt. But what I also do remember is taking the suspension apart, because it was the first of its kind to have movable suspension, and completely destroying it so when i did get this one back from my brother i did have to buy a parts car and use the parts to bring mine back but far as i'm concerned the chassis may be new the wheels and suspension may be new but everything else especially what matters the most the paint this is the same paint i've touched with my personal child hands and to me, that makes this priceless. And let me get something back here. If I'm not mistaken, it does make sound, and I have restored the sound. Let's just take a quick look. Maybe. Yeah. And depending on whether it's in a helicopter formation, or car formation, it will make two different sounds. It is programmed. Let's see here. I might be able to show you really quick. Okay, so if I press this button. Okay, that's the truck sound. Let's do that one more time. You can change the tone. Or for the helicopter sound, you hold this button. Makes helicopter sound. That was pretty cool. Due to me being like Sid. The original chassis that made the original sounds was destroyed by liquid. I did everything I could to bring it back, but there was nothing I could do. It was just too far gone. The car is really hard to put back together because I have really put it through the ringer. But these things do, they come apart very simple. They have these little plastic nuts with these little metal tools, and that allows you to switch out the parts and... That's what they call them mechanics. So that is one right there. The second one that survived is this one. And this one survived a lot better. 
Now, I do believe this one survived a lot better because I didn't have a huge interest in this particular car. This one did something really unique, and it was turned into a jet. So it could be a jet or it could be a Indy car, either or. And I did bring along for this video the little bag of parts to kind of show about this. And you can see here, there's like the little jet back and the little thing. And how this simply works is just you loosen up the little plastic nut, slide it off, take that off, and put that on. And you can quickly see it starts turning itself into a jet car. Whoops. Yeah. And there's other parts in here that adds to it, like wings. You can start putting wings on it. And then there's also, I believe, landing gear. Yes, there is landing gear. I am not mistaken. So you can put landing gear on it. So you can turn this whole car into a jet if you choose. I'm going to go ahead and reset it. The cars that are not in box are usually stored in a display cabinet. And I keep them very close to me. There we go. And there we go. And then let's find that one piece that dropped. There we go. It quickly all interchanges and does go back together. Now, this is not the same one that I had when I was a kid, but this is a Dodge Viper in the white with the blue stripes. This one was bought out of package, but it does remind me of the one that I did have. And like I've said a dozen times, destroyed. Same thing goes for this one. This is the same as the one that I currently have in the box. This is the Dodge Off-Roader. And like with the rest of the cars, you can either put it in where it's got little wheels or you can do it with the big wheels. That is a common feature with all of these. You can either go off-road or road with these. You can also put where they don't have a blower hanging out of the hood, or they do. You can switch out the bumpers. And when I was 10 years old and watching my dad build cars and then these came out, it really made me feel like I could be like my dad and work on cars. That was before I realized I did not want to be like him. Then over here, I do have two Lamborghinis in two different colors. Now, one of these my brother also has from all of those years ago. But with that particular one, he did break his golden roll and he did repaint it. I do not remember which color he, he had to, that, that, that made him repaint it. I'm going to guess it was purple. Growing up, colors like purple and pink were not really allowed for boys. So I'm just going to guess that's the one that he repainted and broke his golden roll. But when I talk about the blowers hanging out of the hoods... As you can see, this one, and we have Catzilla back. Oh boy, you go bye bye. And then this one just has the cover, which can easily be removed. Where this one has a little blower. And here is the '96 Monte Carlo that I did show you as the last one on my wall. This is it taken apart with the blower hanging out of the hood and the spoiler and the wing. Now, I did have a variety of this one growing up, but I'm not even going to say it. It's a broken record at this point of the video. But I was able to track one down. These are getting kind of hard to find. I do believe it's because the plastic kind of warps and kind of makes it hard to actually use it. But it's a little original H1 Hummer. thought that was really unique. As a part of my collection, I also did find this little plastic carrying box. I did wish I had one of these when I was a kid, even though I would have probably needed like five of them to carry all of my parts, if not more. And the center of my table here is really special to me. Because this what is the 30-year anniversary of 
Hot Wheels. I think now they're on their 50 now. I mean, that dates it right there. But I remember when they came out with this truck. I wanted it so bad. And as I have said in my other videos, growing up, we didn't have a whole lot. So most of all these cars that I did get were on Christmas. And today, the amount of money that this truck would cost would be between 40 and 50 And back then, it was about, I think, 30-ish, I think. And that was a lot of, of money. And that was what, you know, that was a Christmas present back then. And I remember having the hugest hunch that Santa, which is my parents, mostly my mom, was going to put this under the tree that year. And we were visiting company and out of town, and I remember that the whole night. I'll never forget it. I didn't sleep a wink. I just felt like this was under the tree. And that Christmas morning when I woke up and I found it, I will never forget it. Unfortunately, the original did not make it with me for the whole entire 20 years. I do not know what happened to it, but it is no longer with us. But I do have this that I have restored all the working sounds and everything to. It did take buying a couple of them to get it down right, but I was able to. So let's go ahead and let's check it out. Now, earlier on my wall, you did hear me talk about the 43 of John Andretti of Petty Motorsports. Now, this is the reason that that was done is this is the 44 of Kyle Petty of the 44 uh, Hot Wheels car. And that's the car that came with it. It's the Pontiac. I mean, when, you know, when was Pontiac's last in, in NASCAR? I mean, that dates this for even more so. And then as a little thing for my shelf display, I did put it in monster truck form. So this really shows the difference between car and monster truck. I don't know why they would put monster truck wheels in a NASCAR, but... You know, when you're a kid and you're playing, it just seems to make sense. This truck is featured with a nice rolling mechanics lift. You just roll your car on up. You turn the little knob. It has its quirks. It is old. And the car comes up somehow. It's like that. And you can play with it. It's all pretend, but you get the point. And then the car comes down. And then if I'm not mistaken, it does have a little dyno in there, so you can do your little imagination dyno runs. Like I said, I am a car guy. I grew up with cars, so all of this when I was a kid just made sense. It really made me feel like I could really embody what my father does, which was every little boy's dream they grow up and they find out who their dad really is that's besides the point but yeah you can drive up right to the back and get up on that found that really cool this is a little engine pool it used to slide back and forth have a little claw pretty cool there little features all over this now this i found really cool when i was a kid you know, when you watch a NASCAR race and they go into the pits and it's super exciting, they make that beow, beow sound when they take off the wheels. That's what this guy does. He can just... And I can tell you 20 plus years later, that still puts a little smile on my face, even though it's so dated. And then there's also little features on this little trailer where it makes more sound. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's pretty sick. And then, as well, the front of the truck does open up, revealing a nice big chrome engine. I do keep a couple spare wheels in here, a little rubber mallet, and. As you've seen before, there's a little X tool, but in this case, they kind of broke the X tool into two special unique tools that get stored in here in little grooves. Now the truck uniquely does fold all up. 
and take the car out. Make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, yeah, looks like that. So the truck does fold up and it just drives nice and neat. It does come into two different pieces. The back comes down and if you want, you can do the play pretend night rider scene where the truck goes down the road and the car's got to catch up and go in. Pretty cool. So this has been a tour of what I have so far of my Mechanics Hot Wheels collection. I am super happy to show you this video. It's taken me about three or four months just to collect this many. Some of these cars are really expensive and hard to find. And I'm always trying to find a good deal on these because these are something that brings back that childhood joy. And as I say in my intro, it's all about the spark. And this was definitely the first little tidbit of a spark that I got was rediscovering these toys. And I really hope out there that someone's watching that was also a kid and forgot about these. And I hope this brings back a memory to you as much as it does to me. So this is Brandon. This was awesome. Thank you for watching this Bricks and Toys video. You all have a good one. What?